travel ban, but um, our focus has been both on the, um, what the implications are for students in China who are able to enter the country, um, and also on what the implications for tutorials and um, staff more generally. So that's the, um, that's the focus that I'm, I'm coming to address today, as I'm sure it's very much front of your minds. Um, I think the first thing to say is it's really a just-in-time process from the university's point of view. Uh, we're dealing with what we know at the moment. What we know at the moment is that there is a ban on entry um, of, from, uh, on the part of students from China, or anyone from China, um, and that ban is, will be reviewed again on Friday. So in two weeks' time, there will be further information. We'll know whether the ban has been extended for another period of time, um, what period of time, and uh, or whether it's been lifted. So we're sort of doing contingency planning, but the most, um, really the most uh, compelling message is that it's business as usual until we hear otherwise. So all tutorials have been um, are programmed and, they're, um, and they remain programmed. Um, however, uh, clearly, this has implications for, uh, depending on what happens with the travel ban, there's likely to be implications for the number of students on campus. We don't know what they'll be. Um, we don't know, I mean, best case scenario, which seems slightly sort of um, fantastical at the moment, is that the travel ban is lifted on Friday. Students are able to self-isolate. Students are able to get around China sufficiently to get on to come to Australia, and then we have the whole question of the self-quarantining and how that's likely to happen. Um, not something that we ourselves are managing. What we're managing is um, how we uh, deal with this sort of scenario where we're, we're uncertain about the numbers. So um, the commitment that we have to casuals is that we'll endeavour to honour the hours outlined in the letters of engagement. Um, we are looking at if various contingencies arise. Um, we could be looking at deploying people in other areas of work. We don't know, as I said, we can only deal with what we know at the moment. Um, and we would look at um, identifying areas where we could engage people um, in work other than the direct tutoring. So the message is not terribly uh, reassuring in, in the sense that I can't give you anything solid in terms of what's happening. All I can do is commit to the fact that the faculty is endeavouring to redeploy people or to consider what the consequences are and see if we can mitigate that in terms of its impact on, um, on your um, engagement with the university. So that's the sort of um, overall message. I'm happy to answer questions and tease out any of those points because I can imagine um, it's not entirely satisfactory from your point of view to, to ask questions and I'll try and answer them or certainly pass them on to people who can. <coughs> questions? Yes. So there's a couple of staff saying all tubes and I mean, on the other hand, you could start with two and they could expand to four, depending on whether students, because at the moment, what the, um, the information that has been provided to students is that their um, subjects, pretty much every subject is available for students to um, follow, engage with using LMS for the for two to four weeks. That's the sort of promise to students at the moment in China, is that um, we are sort of creating that buffer during which time students can retain contact with the subject through LMS and they will be admitted, say they're here by week five. So that's the sort of, that's the, that's the best, well I suppose that's the best case, the best case scenario is that they get here like between week one and two, but as each week progresses, you understand that that's sort of, we're, we're pushing that out um, so we need to sort of confront a situation at some point or another, but no one's saying that, what that point is. So how we're dealing with it, let's say the medium term, is that students are following the subject online through LMS. We're not, we're not talking fully online subject delivery for 
for a whole semester. We're really trying to keep students engaged in the subject material um, for as long as we can and still maintain you know, the academic integrity of the subject and their studies. So that's, we've sort of estimated and subject coordinators have made the call as to whether that's two or four weeks or in some situations it's just then not possible because of the nature of the subject. But um, at the moment it's two to four weeks or four weeks and then students, we're hoping by that stage, and that gives us a bigger buffer zone, if you like, for another week, if there's another week, we still, we still have to keep that deadline. You might think notionally that deadline is the census date, but actually the census date doesn't strictly apply to international students. Um, census date is a CSP related um, requirement, but nonetheless, we make the same sort of um, set, same sort of time frame for international. Does that? Sort of, yeah, I mean, it, it's no great clarity. I mean, you can see the approach that we're taking is to try to ensure that students who can arrive by week five have a way of not falling behind during that intervening period. So I'll take the question in the back first and then come, and then here, yeah, was it? Yeah. Um, as far as I can see, all of us are casual employees who are in a slightly precarious situation with sick leave and work hard and all that sort of thing. Now imagine a scenario where the self-quarantining fails and perhaps we contract the illness from one of our students. Would we be covered by work cover in any shape or form? Uh, well, I, I'm not in a position to answer that question. I don't think it's a straight out no. Um, in terms of because you're covered by work cover. I mean, you are covered by work cover. If you're, in, if you're injured at work, you're covered by work cover. That's case, um, but I'm not